Hastings, number one for the state title. It doesn't get any better than that. Elk River and Hastings coming up in a moment. You know, probably until this season, Hastings player Dan Welch was known as the son of coach Russ Welch. But after last night where Dan got two goals in the final 40 seconds to put Hastings in the semifinals, Russ is probably known as Dan Welch's father. Now Andy Scoopman caught up with a Hastings coach. Well, Russ Welch, you've been head coach 15 years in high school hockey. Have you ever seen a game as good as that one last night? No, I don't I don't think even the producers could have wrote a better <laughs> script than that, at least for us. You know, I feel bad for Blaine. They played really, really hard. But uh, for us, it couldn't have been a better script. Tell me a little bit about that game. and uh, I mean, it was just a wild one. It was it was nuts. There was two goals scored in the first minute of the game, and then three goals scored in 26 seconds in the second period, then 40 seconds left in the game, two more goals scored. So it was pretty wide open and pretty exciting. It was uh, a good good one for the ratings. Have, yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. The sales department loves you guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, have you guys come down from that win? I don't know if we came down. I think uh, some of our guys are disappointed in the way we played, and uh, I would say Blaine is probably a little disappointed, too. We're not really that wide open. Neither team, I don't think, is, and we're a little disappointed with our defensive efforts from probably both the defensemen and the forwards and the goaltending. So I think tonight we'll be, uh, I think we're a little bit more determined to play a little bit closer to the vest. Elk River is a very good team. Yes, they are, and they don't give up many shots, so we can't give up many at our end. So uh, I look for this to be more of a, a defensive battle last night I thought it would be more of a skating battle with the quick forwards but tonight I think it's going to be more of a defensive battle coach good luck hey thank you all right Jeff let's go back to you Andy thank you very much should be a fantastic one Hastings and Elk River for the right to play Rozo in tomorrow night's championship Wally and Lou will set it up in a moment we'll be back you're watching in the final minute sent them from a 6-5 loss to a 7-6 victory and what a thrilling game that was well Wally if you like goal scoring you had it all last night you got him in bunches and it really was an exciting game for the fans it's a game that a coach might pull his <laughs> hair out but for the fans you can't ask for anything more exciting well just a little bit earlier tonight number one Rozo won their game they will be advancing to the state tournament final and now number two Hastings will go up against number three ranked Elk River. And we've got uh, a big game coming up, but when it comes down to it, Louie, we've got the top teams in the state going at it. That we have, and it's nice to see when you're in the finals like that, you want to have that. Elk River really played well. They played real good against the Hill Murray, and Joey Bailey was a key factor in that game all night long. He got a lot of points, he got key goals, and he's one of the people that when you look tonight, Hastings is saying, we've got to stop, you got to stop Joey Bailey. He was very dangerous last night. And when you look at Welch, you know who Elk River is going to key on. Tafe and Welch are unbelievable. Welch has got that great speed, and Tafe is as clever playmaker as there is in the state, and he is certainly going to give fits to Elk River tonight. Both of these teams can skate. Hang on, folks. Buckle those seat belts. Grab a cold one. This will be a fast and furious semifinal game. We've got the face-off coming up next. And meet the starters of this contest. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Target Center at the semifinals of the 1999 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Let's begin our introductions by meeting the cheerleaders from the schools. First, the cheerleaders from Elk River. Alyssa Coro. Stephanie Jawatik. Lacey Johnson. Emily Cleats. Amanda Nathy. And Sarah Weiss. 
And now let's meet the Hastings cheerleaders. First, Kelly Fryermuth. Kristen Warner. Tiffany Sieben. Missy McGree. Nikki Koob. And Cassie Burke. And now, here are your starting lineups for our second semifinal game of the evening. In goal for Elk River, number one senior, Mitch Glines. At defense, number five, senior, Nick Drugsma. At defense, number 11, senior, Andy Crook. At center, number 19, senior Carson Izzati. At wing, number 10, senior Joey Bailey. At number 29, sophomore Joel Hansen. The Elks head coach is Tony Sarslin, assistant coach Paul Burning. And now let's meet the Raiders. In goal, number 29, junior Matt Klein. At defense, number 10, senior Derek Garcia. And number 24, senior Jake Majeski. At center, number 22, senior Jeff Tate. His wings, number 23, senior Dan Welch. And number 25, senior Nick Husting. Raiders head coach is Russ Welch, and his assistant is Jerry Meyer. Here are your officials for this game. The referees are Jeff Shy and Jim Von Wald. And the linesman is Jerome Krieger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the center ice area for the presentation of the sportsmanship code. Sharp tonight because those two always get chances. Terrific, terrific hockey players. And Matt Klein in the nets for Hastings knows he's going to be facing a team that I really think plays as tough a schedule as any in the state. They are certainly ready to play here tonight. They've had tough games all year long. They're a very quick hockey team, and Hastings is not going to be able to get away with laying back at all and not body checking because last night we watched Hill Murray play a physical game. They were fast. They moved the puck well, and they really were an outstanding hockey club, and I think it's going to be a real battle tonight between these two teams, and Hastings is going to have to be in top of their game if they're going to beat Elk River. Elk River coming out of the Twin City Suburban West Conference. They tied for the title with Blaine with identical 10-2 and two records. Meanwhile, Hastings came out of the St. Paul Suburban Conference. They had a perfect 16-0 and mark. They have not lost a conference game in three years. And now they'll move to center ice. The five starters for each team. Jerome Krieger makes sure both goalkeepers are ready. Everybody in this building is, and the last semifinal game of the day is underway. Hastings losing it out their blue line as the linesman Krieger falls, backing up into his position, and Trevor Stewart will play it into the Hastings end. Stewart flipping it high up, up along the glass, back in behind the goal, and this is number 10, Derek Garcia. Up the middle for Tate. It's off of his stick. Carrying on is Majeski. Elk River breaking it up. They're going through a line change. That long pass is out of everybody's reach, and it'll be icing called against the Elks. Well, it was interesting to see Stewart right there lay a check on Garcia. And the really reason why it's interesting is because they're coming out to hit again. And that's one of the good features of that hockey club. They can play a physical game, and it still doesn't hurt them because they've got good speed to get back at the play. Elk River is a quick hockey team. Hastings got good speed. But Hastings is going to have to use the body more than they did last night against Blaine. Yeah, it was a freewheeling first period there between Blaine and Hastings. You'd expect to see Elk River lay the, the, the body on him. Well, that's why you see goals scored in bunches like you did last night. It really was wide open all night. It was a fun game to watch. 
But as I said, it makes for a lot of good scoring opportunities when you play that wide open. Joe Hansen gets the puck into the Hastings zone. If you've just joined us, Hastings wearing the yellow and blue uniforms. Elk River wearing the black with red and white trim. Here's Paul Martin, their big star defenseman, that just a junior, clearing the puck in, but it's brought out, at least attempted to, by the Hastings Raiders. And in behind his own goal now is uh, Miller. Getting it out to center ice. A little bit behind Vanderbosch on that pass. Regrouping a neutral ice is Bootsma. Lost the puck. Fired in now by number 17, Gordy Swanson. Hastings changing on the flies. Her third line comes out. Now Kiefer lifts it in. It comes on target. Hurrying in then there was Pete Swanson, number 19. Gordy Swanson helps out, sending it down low, but this is Captain Crook. For Elk River, sending it around and shot all the way back down the ice and icing the call against the Elks. No score on this one. A little closer tempo than we saw in the last couple of games. We'll be back to target. Tate's line to be playing against Stewart's line because he's got last change and he just brought that line out. On the faceoff here, they put Welch uh, uh, into the faceoff circle. He's a right-hand draw, tries to get it back to Tate. Garcia moves up to tie up the wing. Welch puts it in front. Here's Tafe, number 22, sending it back to the point, winding and firing a Stewart that's blocked. He'll have another try, feeds it over to Garcia, but he was backtracking, going into a defensive mode. The other Stewart for Elk River, number 18, clears it out to center. Tafe will chase it down into the corner, going up against Lemke. They can't clear it. Hastings dropping it back to the point. Joe Stewart getting it over to Derek Garcia. His shot glances off a skate. Trevor Stewart for Elk River will just pound it back out to neutral. Tate missed the puck. Oh, long, but taking the shot, then letting it go. Number 11, Andy Crook. He wasn't sure what to do there. Well, he had a breakaway, and he didn't realize it. Then he finally realized it, and then he started the goal. By then, the hesitation allowed the speed of the Hastings back checker to catch up to him, so he had to take a shot from farther out. He didn't see that Hastings had gone for a line change and left it wide open for him to skate in on the goaltender. Here's Bobby Miller. Look out, there's a shot right on goal as Miller couldn't clear the zone for Hastings. Now circling down low to get it is Adam Gerlach. Puck back out to center and the Elks will relay it right back in before Majeski can get there. Here he is, Majeski. Pass hits the skate, stays inside the zone. Now Brian Navy will send it goalward. And I think a good opportunity here for Matt Klein to freeze it. Well, it was a good opportunity because down in front of the net, you had Joe Bailey standing there, and Hansen deflected that shot from the point that Nathy took. With Bailey in front and Hansen deflecting the shot, the goaltender wisely just f fell on it, made certain that he gets a faceoff. But just previous to that, the puck was coming out, and to me, it seems Elk River's defensemen are a little hesitant a little more tentative with that speed of Hastings because they're pulling out of the zone a little quicker than they did last night. They got to stand in that zone and make sure that they keep the puck in as, you know, as long as they have better than a 60% chance to do it. Keeper getting the puck up the middle now for Gordy Swanson, who's checked. Turned around and fired right back in by Plutie, number 16, Kelly Plutie for Elk River, just a sophomore. Stepping up to intercept the play is Nate Drugsma. He's normally the uh, the tenth forward, but he's playing up on the third line right now. He wears number seven for Elk River. Goalkeeper Mitch Lyons will have it behind the net. Look out, he almost lost it back there. Brian Nathy maintaining control on a fine job. Now it's pried loose, but sent off to the side wall by Izadi of Elk River. Nathy will skate it up, just lobs it out to center. And icing will be the call against Elk River as we play just a little over four minutes. No score in this game as Jeep dealers of the Twin Cities remind well, All their lines are moving with speed and Elk River is somewhat more tentative tonight than they were last night. They're not skating as freely and as quickly as they did last night. Play down low for Houston of Hastings. Stepping up is Stewart, the defenseman. His shot goes wide. Now on the other door, a shot deflected by Tate just wide. Tate gets it from a fallen Elk River player. Tries to cut out in front, beats Stewart at the point. Shot is blocked. Stewart will reach for it again. Now Dan Welch can't sidestep, but Nick Houston keeps it alive. Here's Houston going down low. Boy, Elk River is all over these guys tonight. Tate putting it in front for Welch. That shot's right on, and a great save by Glines. Paul Martin lost it at the side. 
Paulie Hastings is just swarming around there. Finally, it's brought out to center by Paul Martin, who'll shoot it in deep. A lot of good pressure by that number one line of Hastings, and they came out flying at the outset, and they continue to do it. All three of their lines continue to skate, moving, and actually moving much better this early in the game than they did last night. They had a good first period last night, then they fell back, but this game is a little more complete than they were playing early last night. Joe Stewart's pass is incomplete. That'll be an icing call against Hastings, and that means a face-off all the way back in their defensive zone. Last night, Elk River was playing the way Hastings is playing right now. In fact, the first period last night, Elk River and Hill Murray was quite quite physical, and, yep. and they had good puck movement. Tonight, you're seeing Hastings, strong forechecking pressure, taking a man, just ganging up two guys on the puck at all times. There's Paul Martin beating not one but he's got to try and beat the second man and he gets checked and that's what Hastings is doing very well tonight a lot of four checking pressure Derek Garcia tying up the Elk River player but the Elk still maintain control it's fed down low tripping up down there was Joel Hansen and it's uh, the Raiders trying to come out nice little poke out the center but unable to catch up to it was Gerlach Waiting momentarily was Majeski for his teammates to get onside, but now the Elks come back. Whoa, there's a big time Ooh. chop and no penalty called on that one. There's a big time hit by Majeski. He had a good one like that last night and he really used his body well there. Here's a steal, turning and shooting is Nate Chris Nathy, or at least attempting to. Puck goes back down low and behind the goal for Flutie. Now the big Hanson boy going for it. Eric Hansen, six foot three, two thirty-five. What do you think his nickname is? Moose. Drugsma at the point. Winds and fires right on. That took a skip. It looks like off the ice. <laughs> but uh, Klein was there to make the save. No score on this one. We'll be back. The downtown mini. Goes along the boards. Plutie gets it back, and as that puck goes over to Hansen, he gets it back to the defenseman, and Drugsma takes a shot that actually skips. Right here, takes a bounce right off the skate. And the goaltender had to make a fine save on that. Trevor Stewart, number 18, one of the three best players on this team, and he's just a sophomore for Elk River. He falls behind the net and allows Hastings now to move up out of their own zone. Gordy Swanson stopped in neutral, but Brummer will carry on. Feeds it over to Stewart. His pass a little bit behind Nykel. He'll just dump it off the wall to the side. Stewart is there, spun up. And back to take it is Bobby Miller, who's hammered into the wall. And good play by Miller there to fight off a check and get that puck out. A race boy, Brian Nathy, up against Swanson. Goes around to the other door and locked it out to center ice by Paul Martin, the defenseman for Elk River. Martin will get it again. He had three assists in the victory last night over Hill Murray. Stepped into the zone, but lost the puck. Here's Dan Welch. He's got great speed. Look at him explode out of the zone. A head man pass now to Houston. To Tate, who had to dig it out of his feet. Drops it off for Houston. Back into Tate in the corner. Tate squeezed up along the play. Joel Hansen, number 29 there for Elk River. But we finally have a stoppage of play. And look over to the right. Drummer's all over Welch. Welch got taken down. And away from the play, Brummer knows. Welch is dangerous around the net. So when Welch went down, Brummer didn't move. He just stood over him and actually leaned on his back and was staying right there. He says, as long as you're here, I'm here, and you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Real good checking over there by John Brummer. And as you said, that second line here for Elk River is a smart young line. Stewart, even though he's a sophomore, a very heady centerman, plays very well. And Michael has given a real good performance last night and early here on tonight. We're looking now at Vander watching line coming out, Gerlach and Volga saying, and boy, they played real well last night. Boy, did they ever. They're up against the second line for Elk River. I think at the top line, that's Bailey, Leonard, and Joel Hansen. I think that's what Welch is doing. He wants to have this line check in the top line. Look at Vander go. Boy, he's almost as fast as Welch, maybe faster. They've got good speed in this line, and, and I think the coach is very confident in their ability to check the top line of Elk River. Joe Bailey is checked back behind the goal by Vogel Gassang, number 11 for Hastings. Puck comes back to the point and unable to hold the zone. 
was number 20 Vanderbosch. We haven't seen a lot of line matchups in this tournament thus far, Wally. This is probably the most we've seen, and, and Welch has really been very determined thus far keeping Gerlach's line against uh, Leonard's line. He's got the last change, and uh, look at him there. He's just standing, just standing along, waiting for the line for White Bear to come out. He's not putting anybody out. Here's what you're seeing, a body check right here, something that we didn't see much of last night. That was Swanson laying the check on, and we didn't see much physical play by Hastings last night. Tonight, we've seen much more already. In fact, Bobby Miller threw three checks and one, one uh, shift down along the left boards here. Stewart pulls it back for Martin. His shot glances off the leg of Kiefer back out to center ice. Here's Bobby Miller again. Quick line changes by both teams. They're trying to match up on the fly. Bobby Miller will shoot it in. One player's offside, but he tags back up. The number one unit out there for Hastings going up against the number three unit for Elk River. But here come the Elks up the middle. Paul Martin shifting left across the line. Does a pirouette. Hands it off now to number nine, Brummer, getting into the side of the goal. Let's go! Boy, what a play by Brummer. He actually got it from the short side. It hits the goaltender and goes in. It was a strong forechecking effort by them. And what happened was Sarsland came out with his third line, and Coach Welch wanted his first line out. He doesn't want him against Leonard's line, but it paid off that time for Elk River because the strong forechecking moves down deep. Watch in the corner after Martin right here. He's making good moves at the puck, and then he gets it over to Brummer. He's going to get it deep. And coming out of the side is Nickel, I believe that is. I think that it was... It could be Izzotti. He was out or there. Izzotti, yeah, yeah. It was Izzotti on the right side. So, yes. Sarsland coming out with a real shifted line. He had Stewart, Brummer, and Izzotti, two-thirds of one line and one-third of another. And it was a good move by Martin, by the way, who just, again, gets the puck down deep. He's very, very intelligent, the defenseman, 15 for Elk River with that puck. Brian Nathy and Paul Martin picking up the assists on Izzotti's goal, his first of the tournament. Starting for Elk River, number 19. A big scrum going on in Houston, trying to step out of the zone. He gets a return pass, and here comes Nick Houston. There's going to be a penalty as Dan Welch is tripped up coming up ice, and that will put Hastings on the game's first power play. We'll be back to see what the Raiders will do with the extra man advantage leaning on him on the ice away from the play after he got knocked down. This time he shattered him again a little too closely. He got called for interference as Welch went down. And Brummer knows his job tonight, obviously, by watching it, is when he's on the ice, if Welch is on the ice, you stay with him. But you got to stay with him without knocking him down when he hasn't got the puck. And Hastings now has the opportunity to tie this game as they get the first power play of the evening. And they've got a good one, folks. Sit back and enjoy this. They went along at a 43% clip this, this season. 0 for 2 last night, however, against Blaine. Hastings like to really spread out the ice. They've got it forward all the way at the far blue line. They they hope that they could spread out the, the ice so much that they're not going to get any forechecking pressure. But what happens is your forwards are standing still up there. So you got to make short passes to skate that puck up because as soon as that pass is made, the checker goes to you, and they're having a real tough time coming up the ice right now. Mm -hmm. The defenseman on the left side played way up on the right winger Welch, or, or the fellow that took the right wing now was uh, actually Gerlach. And they leave just one four checker to put a little pressure, and the second guy stays way back, circling, so he's got speed, and wherever that puck goes, he goes to it immediately. And when you're standing flat-footed, you're easy to check, and, and they got to start coming up the ice, yeah, actually carrying that puck more if they're going to try and get it in deep the way it's spread out now. Here's Ben Tharp, one of three players off this Hastings team that will be going to the University of Minnesota next year. Tate is another one. He's got the puck. Enters the zone. Is checked and met by Paul Martin. Martin will try to pick up the loose biscuit down in the corner. Does. Gets it up now for Jed Leonard. Leonard had a big game last night. Gets that shot on goal shorthanded. He had a goal and an assist in last night's 5-1 win over Hill Murray. Tate from outside the line. A high rising one is gloved and held on to by Mitch Glines. Well, 44 seconds left to go in this power play, and he seems to having a real difficult time 
getting control of the puck in the offensive zone, taking shots from far out, trying to dump it in from a long way out. The way the defense is stacked up against them right now, they're going to have to carry it over that blue line, gain control, and move it around because they're having a tough time getting any shots on goal. And when you're a man advantage like this, you should be at least getting control of the zone and moving it around a little bit. 44 seconds left. The power play. Welch with a screamer right on goal. Booted out nicely by Glines. 4-10 to go in the period. 1-0 Elk River. On a goal by Carson Izadi. Only his fourth of the year. Here comes Welch flying down the far side. Won't go anywhere with it. It's ringed around the wall by number 16, Pluty, but not out. A second effort does clear the zone, and Tharp will have it back at his own blue line for the Hastings Raiders. Pass just misses going onto the stick of number 10, Derek Garcia, the defenseman, who moves up front. Now Paul Martin breaking back for Elk River. Tried to slide into the slot, but two Hastings Raiders tie him up. He's had a phenomenal period of hockey. He had a great game last night. He's even better thus far tonight. He has really had a great 12 minutes of play. You know, sometimes you don't want to always believe what you hear from these coaches yeah. when they uh, promote their own players, but he feels Paul Martin may be the best defenseman in the state, and we oh boy, he, all, almost have to concur with that, eh? We haven't seen him all, but I tell you, he is really a terrific player. He's played already this season representing the U.S. in uh, some select play, and you can see why he's been chosen. And he's only a junior. Picked up 30 points this year. Already has four here in the playoffs. That power play was just not very effective for Hastings. Even up now on the attack is Gordy Swanson. Ducks off a check but lost the puck in the process as it's uh, retained by Crook. Oh boy, the bodies are flying left and right right now. This is the style of game we saw last night with Hastings, but I mean with Elk River, but Hastings is picking it up as well. They have uh, been much more physical here tonight than they were last night. Moose Hansen coming back. He's checked and spun around. Moose gets it again. He's outside the zone. He'll just slide it in and heads off in a line change. He's got to be tired after that. He threw about three big hits yeah. out there. <laughs> but he outweighs him by about 50 pounds. No kidding. 2.10 to go in the period. Elk River swarming back defensively to cover, but they lose the puck. Here's a backhand attempt blocked. It comes back for Garcia, fakes the shot, gets it to Tharp. There it goes. That's a headshot blocked yeah. by Brummer. Now Tharp again with it. Sidesteps a check, fires wide this time. Garcia trying to step up. Brummer breaks it out to center. Racing after it is Travis Stewart, but he falls. Stewart now hands it off to Nichol. Raiders clear, but not out. There's Brian Nathy's shot right on. Brummer going for it, trying to feed Nichol, number 17. Stewart, 18 in there now for Elk River. And finally, it's scooped up and brought back out to neutralize. Here comes Adam Gerlock shooting it in and heading off for a line change. Buck 15 to go in the period. Long breakout attempt is beyond everybody's reach, and that'll be icing called against Elk River. Timeout. The Jeep scoreboard will show you a 1-0 lead. The only goal of the game coming from Carson Izadi. Strong game at the outset, but somewhat of a lucky goal by Elk River has really turned that hockey club on because from that point on, they are playing much better than they did. And right now, they had some much more control of the game than they had earlier and also played much more physical since that time. Joe Bailey, number 10, kicks the puck loose. His line mate Jed Leonard picking it up then losing it at neutral. Hastings has it now. Here come the Raiders just dumping it in as we enter the final minute of the period. Paul Martin's back for Elk River. Lost the puck to Tafe, and then Bailey's there to recover for him. Up to Brummer. He'll toss it in. And this is Majeski back there, number 24 for Hastings. Big Jake the Snake getting it across ice. Reaching the line is Tate. Trying to go down the wall with it, but there was four black-clad Elks there to make sure it went nowhere. Here's Bobby Miller looking. Now here's a steal coming across the line. Plutie trying to get it across. He did, and that shot is blocked by Klein. 
Now Majeski bouncing around in the corner there with Plutti as sticks get up a little high. When Plutti was breaking towards the net for, <laughs> for a rebound. Majeski just knocked him down. Majeski's thrown more checks tonight than I think the defense of Hastings threw all day yesterday. They are playing much more physical. Majes Majeski and Garcia have really laid out a couple guys along the boards, and they, they have to be physical against Elk River and slow them down somewhat. Well, as well known as Hastings is, Lou, for their speed, that they can certainly play the man-on-man uh, -man game as well. They are playing it tonight, and they have to be because Elk River came through a very physical <laughs> game last night with Hill Murray. Hill Murray is a big, strong team, and Elk River matched them check for check. Tit for tat right there between Majeski and... Well, you don't want to Woody. match too many tit for tats with uh, Eric Hansen out there at <laughs> six foot three, two thirty-five. <laughs> He's got some size to him. And they're dishing out checks like it's the first of the month. 11 seconds to go. Big important faceoff now. Trevor Stewart is in there for Elk River. He's going to say, no, let, let, let the big guy, let Moose in here. Moose ties up his man, but Hastings gets a stick on it to clear the zone. Looking. Drukes must pass off target. That'll lead up the clock. Well played first period of hockey here. Real well played. Hastings came out and using the speed and playing a very solid hockey game and it looked like that they were going to take the lead. All of a sudden, some strong forechecking by Elk River frees up a puck. They get a shot from the side of the net. A little bit of a fluky goal. They take the lead and they start turning on the Jets. Then the game became even more physical from that point on. And when they were going back and forth, a real good effort by both clubs. I'm sure that you're looking at Coach Russ Welch. He's a little upset about some stick work, but he can't be too uh, upset about being down just one nothing and knowing the scoring ability of his, his hockey team. The only goal scorer, Carson Izzotti, the hard-working roll guy, has staked his Elk River Elks to a one nothing lead after the first 15 minutes of this semifinal matchup. Our intermission coming up next. Thing you could call that period the best of Carson because uh, Carson Izzotti, Gets his first tournament goal, come up with some more. But there are your choices. Uh, a lot of familiar names, too, if you've been watching our tournament as you are now because you're watching me. Uh, to vote, area code 612-946-1234. Enter category 1996. You can vote, and we'll give you the results of that on Minnesota 9 News on Monday. We will be back with more Elk River leading 1-0 over Hastings, the number three Elks. Trying to get a spot in the championship game against number one Rozo as we wrap up the Northland Ford intermission report. When we come back, Wally and Lou with a look at the first 15 minutes, and then we'll have the second period of our second double-A semifinal. Covering the high school boys hockey tournament. I'm Don Poplanski, district manager for Toyota. With me tonight is Jeff Grayson. Please uh, explain the program for us, Jeff. Well, it's the Toyota Drive for Education contest, and this is the 10th year that Toyota uh, and its uh, local dealers have been involved in the Toyota Drive for Education program, and schools throughout Minnesota were asked to submit essays, and the uh, 10 winners in our 10th year each receive uh, $2,500 uh, prizes, and uh, we have the winners through the Toyota Drive for Education fund. And, and our, who's our winner tonight? Hopkins High School in Hopkins, Minnesota, and they are going to use the money for a school newspaper. That's fantastic. Thank you, and thanks for having me here tonight. That's Donna Poplanski, Toyota District Manager, and now, as we switch roles, let's go upstairs now to Wally Shaver and Lou Nanny. I think you guys ought to switch roles permanently down there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way Donna did her side. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> Well, only one goal scored in that period. That came off a, uh, a role player by the name of Carson Izzotti, and he just did it by, by hard work, Lou. But look at the work by Paul Martin, who's really been the best player on the ice thus far tonight. He laid that pass off to Brummer. Brummer got it down deep, and Izzotti just threw persistence here. He hit the side of the net. The puck came back to him, and he played it off the goaltender. Actually, a very lucky goal. You don't think yeah. they're going to go in, but you never, ever make a mistake by shooting the puck at the net. And that's what happens when you put them in. They get a one-goal lead here. We're looking at Elk River. They've got a lot of hockey fans here tonight, leading 1-0 after a strong first period. 
Hastings had the first half of it, and Elk River had the second half. Shots on goal in that period favored Elk River as they had a 9-4 edge through the first 15 minutes of hockey here. Uh, the face-offs were a little more in the advantage of Hastings by a 9-6 margin. Good quality opportunities, three by Elk River, two by Hastings. And there's a look at the statistical summary from that opening period of play. Any thoughts on what you might expect here in the second period? And I want to bring up the, uh, the subject that both coaches seem to have some comments for the refs after that first period. Well, anytime you get a physical game, somebody's going to be upset about a call or a non-call. And that's what you had happen at the end of the period. But I think if you're Elk River and you looked at the game last night and you looked at the way you played, you know that you've got to come out and be physical against the Hastings team because Hastings is explosive up front. They've got great speed. And if you're Hastings, you know Elk River is going to hit. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing in hockey is being on the inside of checks all the time. Yep. You've got to be in the outside of some of the checks. You've got to lay the body on or pretty, pretty soon you get worn down. And that's what Hastings did. They came out here and body checked more tonight than they did all of last night. They played a solid period in, in the physical end of it. They, they played with a great deal of speed early. They just got to move the puck a little better than they did late in the period. And actually, it was Elk River's forechecking that created the goal. And that's where they were so strong last night. And that's what Elk River, I would think their coaches tell them, to forecheck as aggressively as you can. Elk River making their second trip to the state tournament. They last went back in 1993. It's interesting because they've always had very good teams, but they've had to get past some very good teams while playing both in Section 8 and Section 7, trying to get by the likes of a Moorhead, Duluth East, and Hibbing. But they're here now. They're very impressive, but they've got a very impressive team to try to knock off, and that is the Hastings Raiders, who are making their fourth trip to state, but their second consecutive year in doing so. Well, well, you said it at the outset. It's really good that here we are sitting maybe just two periods away. You never know if we're going to go into overtime. But two periods away from the finals of the state high school hockey championship. And what do we have? we got the number one seed already in mm -hmm. and two and three playing to get the second seed. That's the way it's supposed to work. And yeah. it's really fun when it does work that way because these teams have worked hard all year long. They earn those positions, and if they are that good, they deserve to be here. And we're going to see who is going to face a very strong Roseau Hockey Club tomorrow night in hopefully two periods. We don't have overtime, but if we do, <laughs> that's okay. We're getting paid for overtime this year. <laughs> Number two and three, as you would expect, are separated by a slim one goal. Uh, coming from Carson Izzotti, his fourth of the year. And Hastings already making <laughs> a player change before the first faceoff as coach Russ Welch of Hastings is trying to keep lines matched the way he wants. Yeah, and he's uh, actually, I think he's making a little change now. He's made a change from what he did in the first period, and now Sarsland makes a change. He's going to get comfortable <laughs> with, with his lines on the ice. So it's interesting to watch the chess matches go on and see who ends up ahead. Joe Bailey entering the zone, but he's upended from center ice. It's driven right back in by the Elks. We're wearing the black uniforms tonight. Hastings wearing their gold and blue. And here they come. Gerlach's pass was blocked. The second try goes through. Trying to stream up through the middle was number 11, Vogelgesang. Elks block it. There's a big scrum going on, and it's a delayed offside finally whistle. So the line matching will continue. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, if you continue to match lines and the reason why I say that if you're happen happening to keep your top line on the bench because you don't want them out against a certain line pretty soon you start eating up the clock with your best player sitting there so yeah. you got to make a decision do I want that line out there regardless who they're playing against or am I going to wait and get the kind of matchup I want and it all depends how effective the other team is changing on the fly if you get the matchup you want and you can keep the puck down deep the other team can't change on the fly and that's what you try and do is get control of the puck when you have the line match if you want and get it down deep so they can't make a line change. Dan Wells, number 23, is being watched like a shadow by number nine, Brummer. That's exactly the matchup that Tony Sarsland wants, and I'm sure that's the reason why Russ Wells, the Hastings coach, was complaining at the end of the first period because his star guy had somebody in his back pocket. And that's... A that's the best way to play. When you've got somebody as dangerous as Danny Welch on the ice, you've got to pay attention to that kind mm -hmm. of player. Well, we saw what happened last night. The yeah. fact is, even when you pay attention to him, he's going to still get chances because he's a highly skilled hockey player. 
Jeff Tate coming up for Hastings, but his drop pass is right onto the stick of number 20, Chris Nady. And uh, here is number five, Nick Drutzma, getting it up ice. Brummer will just dump it in. Long bomb effort by Bobby Miller is picked off. Coming back down the side wall is Drugsma trying to cut in. He slowed down in the process. This allows Gordy Swanson to get it for Hastings. Here's Swanson, number 17, up out of his own end. Just shoots it in off the wall. He'll give chase. Drugsma lines him up. Centering pass hits the back of the goal cage, and the Elks will take control. Up through the middle now. Number 16 is Pluti. Hastings back for it. However, number 20 is there. That's Chris Nathy. Nathy seeing a little more ice time tonight than he did last night. Hansen was looking for that pass, but we have a delayed offside called. It's a chess match right now, two and a half minutes into our second period. Menards reminds you, it is still a 1-0 Elk River lead. got to get yourself a great Chevy truck right now. Gotta get it. Get a Chevy S10 right now with 0.9 financing for up to 48 months or a thousand cash back. Gotta get it. And come see the all-new Chevy Silverado, Motor Trend's truck of the year. This is the truck. What are you waiting for? Gotta get it, gotta get it. If you want to get a great deal on your new 99 Chevy truck, you got to get to your Chevrolet dealer. Gotta get it. 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 Now. One thing Elk River's got to worry about is this line up there tonight, Gerlach, Vanderbosch, and Gulgesang. Gulgesang and uh, his line mates last night had a strong night, and they are not worried about playing the top line of Elk River at all. They got good speed, they work hard, and they use their body. This could be an interesting matchup. Here's Gerlach entering the zone for Hastings. Going around the net, trying to ward off a check, lost the puck. Hansen lost it, however. Here's Gerlach shooting, that's just wide. Joel Hansen getting it once again. Headman's a pass now onto the stick of Jed Leonard. His effort to Joe Bailey is just too far. Klein comes out. Gerlach's pass just a little bit under the reach of Vanderbosch. And going back to the Elk River zone is Paul Martin. Does that guy ever leave the ice? No, and if he played for me, he wouldn't either. <laughs> Fanned on the first one, but the second shot by Stewart is on goal. Now here comes Jeff Garcia. He picked up three assists in last night's hockey game. He's coming from block, back deep into the Hastings zone. This is Joe Stewart turning around. Now Tate coming out of his own end. Chris Cross is in the middle with Welch. It's onside, but that shot by Tate will go way up into the upper reaches of Target Center. I want to tell you, John Drummer came back and picked up Welch on the far side, and he rolled him right across the blue line. That was a great back-checking job. And when you were talking about Paul Martin not leaving the ice, it was really funny. He was playing with Nick Brooksman first. And by the way, Brooksman played a great game last night. He was playing very solid tonight. He went off the ice, and Martin just took the other position. He just went across and played the other defensive position. But <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Dan Welsh goes to the locker room in between periods. You wouldn't be surprised if he found Brummer sitting in the same locker room with him. <laughs> <laughs> really. Here's Welch. Guess who's watching him? Welch with a steal. Brummer watching him. Welch with it. Brummer takes him out. Brian Nathy now ties up his man, and back behind the goal is grabbed by Stewart. Lots of action going back there. Tate will get the puck. Looking for an open point. Finds one with Majeski. Teeing it up. Let's it go, and it's wide. Bobby Miller slaps at it. Brummer watching Welch. He tries to center. No dice there. What a job Brummer's doing. But the only thing, when you're watching a man that closely, because Brummer's following Welch all over the ice, that's leaving the right point open. And if Hastings, they had one chance there, they got it back, they got a shot away. If they get control of the puck, the person they have to look for is going to be the right defenseman because nobody's watching him. Brummer is following Welch all over the ice, even down behind the net. That's a little unusual when you're watching a man because sometimes you let the defenseman pick him up. Now watch where he goes, number nine. He's going to follow him down deep, and he'll follow him all the way. He keeps bothering him. So if you got three guys here and two of them, somebody's open. You know who's open? The right point, man. Here we go. Coming out of the zone is Nate Drugsma. Off that fourth line, shooting it in is Drugs. And back in behind. 
behind his goal. Picking it up now is Mike Vanderbosch. Here comes uh, Hastings sliding it in. Kiefer doing the job. Two Swanson boys going in for it, but he deludes both of them, and Paul Martin has it. Kiefer checks him. Paul Martin will try the other door this time. Finds it open and leads Nate Drugsma at the center ice. He lets it go a little further, then takes a return pass. Drugsma looking for Flutie, but the pass behind him. Drop back to the point. Winding up now is his big brother, Nick Drugsma, who lost the puck. Look out, here comes Vanderbosch. He's got some wheels, backhands it in front, but Drugsma's there to intercept. Not cleared out. Tossed back down low by Gerlach. Drugsma being pestered. Trying to sneak out in front is uh, Vogel saying, but he was all tied up, and back come the Elks. Lifted into the zone by Kaluti. And Martin's finally going off the ice. This is the first time he's left the ice in about five minutes. Here comes Vogel saying again, number 11. The little guy sprinting down the end boards, but he's tied up along the wall. Jed Leonard feeding it around to the other side for Joel Hansen. Lugging it out to neutral, pokes it in. Leonard picks it up, has Bailey breaking. Lost the puck. Hansen will try to center it and does, but it's off a stick and high in the air. Hastings darting back to the middle, trying to anyways. Here's Jed Leonard picking it back up again. The smooth skater, Nick Dean Spanky coming across the line. Checked away from him. Brian Ely coming back. Has a good shot. Try to dump it in, but bringing it right back now is Houston. Yeah, yes, that is. There's right in front of the referee. You don't have to wait. You know what you're going to get. Uh -huh. Stewart's going to be going as he pulls Houston down. Houston didn't even have the puck, and so we'll get a power play for Hastings. And we'll be back to see what the Raiders can do this time, still scoreless on the power play in the state tournament. Seems like everyone is getting ready for Toyota's National Spring Sales Event. See your Toyota dealer now for great deals and low financing on the tough Tacoma 4x4 that'll take you anywhere. You'll also find up to $2,400 in extra value package savings. Get ready for a great deal. Get ready to be impressed. Even though it's only two minutes for hooking for Trevor Stewart, this is really a double penalty, and I say that because Stewart kills penalties very well for Elk River, and he can't do it while he's sitting in the box. He's only a sophomore, a very bright young hockey player, and he's been a factor here tonight for Elk River. A strong checker, doing a great job, but he gets called for holding and for hooking, and he's going to be sitting. Tate has Ralph breaking, and the pass is just over his stick on a good try for Hastings. Now shorthanded, Jet Stewart coming back at that Leonard. His shot is over top the goal. Hastings trying to roll out. They've got a minute and a half left on power play. Here's Dan Welch. He's getting some open ice. Lost the puck, though, and then had his wheels taken out from under him. Elk River looking for an opening up the middle. Wrong place to put it. Tate at the point. Fires. It's deflected. Where is it? I think it went up in the crowd, actually. Row 12. Yeah. <laughs> actually, it was... Some very smart play there by Danny Welch. They've had a great deal of difficulty getting control of the zone when they're in the power play. Finally, he goes back, just picks the puck up, and skates it over the blue line. Got control. They start to move it around. They put some pressure on. They got some shots. That's the way they have to go to get control of the zone. Come up with speed, get control of the puck, and skate it into the zone because the long passes really work against them on that first power play. Here's Ben Tharp to Dan Welch. Oh, that just missed. Tharp holds in at the blue line. And Elk River will clear the zone. Elk River champs in section 7 AA. Hastings champs in section 2 AA. And here they come. Tharp again on the backhand. The captain locks it in. Drugma in there, number five for Elk River. Nick trying to clear it around the other side of Paul Martin, his uh, defense partner. Look out, almost stolen by Majeski at the point. There's a blast by Stewart right on. And Mitch Glines comes up with a tough test. 
Lyons was very quick to pounce on that rebound. He went to catch it with his glove. The puck was actually fluttering through the air because when it was shot from the point, it was standing up. It was almost playing tricks. He was able to knock it down with his glove and pounced on it right away because on the doorstep, Houston's was standing right there and he wasn't about to let him have a free shot at it. Watch this puck now as it goes out to the point. See, it's wobbling a little bit and right here. When it gets shot like that, it's moving. And it's yep. tough to really judge where you're going to get it. Getting a double penalty called here for stuff in front of the net. Vanderbosch, who's always pretty aggressive in front, and Drugsma both going off. So we'll have coincidental penalties. 19 seconds to go, and Stewart's penalty. Good play by goaltender Glines there, making certain there's no rebound. Vanderbosch, who's got a great deal of speed and is not afraid to stick his nose in. Gets involved in front of the net, fighting for that rebound. Drugsma very smart, and he takes him down. You don't let somebody slam away at your goaltender without hitting him, and that's what he did. Number 18 in that box was Trevor Stewart. He still has 15 seconds now remaining in his penalty. As the Hastings Raiders go back, Drugsma feet away from his top net. Moving forward, Gerlach had it chopped off of his stick. Gerlach continues after it. Tries to weasel his way along the boards, knocking Jed Leonard down in the process. Paul Martin's there, crushed by two Hastings Raiders. Penalty has expired, so Hastings now looking at a five-on-five -five situation. But here's Jed Leonard across the line, taking a shot towards Bailey just wide. Gerlach back down the right wing boards for Hastings as a pass stopped by Paul Martin. He slides it ahead for Leonard, trying to get it to Bailey. Back to Leonard, entering the zone. Sharp angle shot, booted out of there by Matt Klein. Sharp angle shot, but he hit it right on the far corner. Wilton had to make the save. Play. Klein had to kick that one away. It would have caught the inside of the pipe. That's knocked down with a high stick. We're going to take a timeout while they spot the players, and obviously the coaches will be matching changes again. We'll be back. Class A semifinal, Hermantown's Chris Barron broke a one-all tie in the third period with this rebound shot against top-ranked Red Wing. The goal proved to be the game winner as Mr. Hockey Johnny Pole's shot with 15 seconds left bounced off the crossbar. The getting control of the puck, getting a shot from the far angle, put it right on net, line at to make the save. This game has been a very well-played hockey game by both teams tonight. This is an excellent hockey game we're watching in this second game. And once more, it's involving the Hastings Raiders. A shootout last night, but an equally good game, but with a little different story on the scoreboard. Yeah, a completely different type of game, too, but a well-played hockey game. Both of these clubs are very hard. And it's just as fast a pace as yep. the Hastings game last night. Here's a steal for the Hastings Raiders. This is Pete Swanson, number 19, down low, but the centering pass is picked off. Well, we knew it wasn't going to be as wide open because Elsberg was a very diligent check in hockey field. Moves through a big hit and turns over the puck. Leonard going deep into the zone, trying to get to it, but it's taken away again by the Raiders. This is Bobby Miller behind his goal. Boy, he, moves just, he can move this building. He comes cruising. It's like a big bomber coming at you. Trying to cut out in front is number 20, Chris Nathy. Bringing it back to his brother Brian, or uh, cousin Brian, back at the point. Now it's lifted, but bounces off of a uh, Raiders stick. Here's Michael getting it back to a point. Brian Navy's uh, shot goes off somebody behind the goal. Michael getting it again. The junior is checked into the boards. The other number 17, Gordy Swanson for Hastings, overstates the puck. Turnaround shot is just wide. Then coming off a Brummer stick. Brummer, another shot, wide to the left this time. And look at Brummer, he plays up high in the slot, just watching Welch all the time. He's willing to get a shot at any loose pucks, but he stays in his position. Houston to flex the puck in the zone. Tate's going for it. Try to tap it back for the trailing player, but he will do so as Brian Neely broke it up. And bounces off the uh, glass partitions favorably to center ice. Jeff Tate. Pass picked off. Stewart back over to Garcia. Feeds it up the middle to a speaking Houston. In the tape. Oh, the return pass. Just deflected before it can go to Houston. Garcia holds the line. Apparently not. Offside's a call. 
It's a one nothing hockey game. Carson Izzotti has the only tally in this one. That was back in the midpoint of the first period. Because of the good job Brummer's doing in Welch, you see Tafe and Houston's playing together. And they've got to move the puck themselves, try and get one another open because the yeah. other line mate has been checked right so closely you think he's wearing the same uniform. So they've got to make something happen between the two of them. Nate Drugsma's shot, make that Nick Drugsma's shot is blocked. Joe Bailey going for it. He's number 10 for Elk River. Lost the puck. And look at how many times Elk River comes up with the puck along the boards, even when they're outnumbered. That's where they're very effective. They play strong when they're on the walls. Here's Vander Bosch. Look at him go! Into the zone. He'll just ring it around. Nick Drugsman will pick it up. There's a trip. Joel Hansen for Elk River will clear it in. Coming right back the other direction now is Majeski. Big Jake takes a shot wide. Going after it is uh, number 25, Houston. The puck bouncing around. Dan Wells calls a shot block. Now Miller lets it go. That's just wide. Jeff Tate getting in it. A quick line change for Hastings. Looks like it's working. Houston trying to get it back to the point for Majeski. Goes back in behind the goal. There is Stewart for it. Here come the Elks. Drive it in. Majeski to Tate. At the line. Fakes a shot. Tate moving in. Let's it go. And that is just wide. And Karen's off the wall. 200 feet back the other direction. And that's what you got to see for Hastings. A lot more Tate carrying the puck alone, making some moves. He is extremely dangerous when he's handling the puck. He just missed the far side on that shot. And he can open things up just by his puck carrying ability. Hastings giving away to Brummer. Now Chris Nathy tries a shot. That's blocked. Gonna make that Nate Drutzma. Tell you, Sarsland is getting everybody into the game here for Elk River. Yeah. There is a whistle down there. We're going to take a short time out. We'll be back to downtown Minneapolis for more semifinal action. And he's got to be extremely pleased with the kind of effort his team is putting out here tonight. He's getting the fellas on the ice that he wants and he's getting them to do the kind of job he wants. And you see Hastings here just, oh, they're gonna be, a, oh, too many men on the ice are gonna be called here for Elk River on that change just before the, we went to commercial break. And with 2.03 to go here in the second period, Hastings getting the opportunity to go back on the power play. And they uh, weren't very successful the first two times, so you don't want to tempt fate too often when you got a high scoring team like Hastings. Is that part of the risk of trying to match? Yeah, yeah, but you're always going to have that even whether you're trying to match or not. If fellas going on the ice have to know who they're taking. And when a, when a player is coming off the ice, he's got to come off the ice. Too many times you see a player coming, they see a play developing, they think they're going to get caught, so they go back into yeah. play and someone's already jumped on. Good point. Let's see what they can do with the power play this time. It's the third of the game for Hastings. And they'll regroup in neutral. Gerlach swept away. And a nice job down there by number 19, Carson Izzotti, who has the only tally in this hockey game. Now here's Vanderbosch streaking in. And he doesn't get a lot of mustard on that one. That was a good play by Hastings. They had a shorter pass coming out of the zone. Gerlach was just by the blue line. The defenseman came up, made the play to him. On the far side, you got Vanderbos coming with speed. He gets a good pass, takes it wide, drives to the net. Paul Martin keeps him wide, which is a good play. So he couldn't get much on that shot as he's being checked. And the goaltender had an easy save and smartly freezes the puck. Boy, he's got a set of wheels on him. Yeah, Vanderbosch had a fabulous game last night. Got checked very heavily to the boards in the last minute of the play, but he's back in good speed tonight. Fans on that one as it was rolling. Now here's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Izadi. No, it's Stewart. There's a shot. That's blocked. One minute to go in the period, and uh, about the same for the penalty. Dan Welch across the line. Leaves a trailer. Takes a return pass down low. Puts it out in front. At least attempted to, but Paul Martin blocked it. Tate centers, but Martin there again to pick it off. To Stewart. I make this Martin lugging it out to center. 
Oh, good play by Martin. Oh, he is a smart hockey player. Brummer with a long drive. He'll have another try with it. And just rolls it in. 30 seconds to go in the period. Not off. Yes, it is. I was going to wonder. Man, that guy was in there like a swan dive. And Brummer's in a quandary when he's out there right now. He's got a man short, so you know you can't play man on man. And he <laughs> knows Welch is out there, but what he does is he stands a little bit back. He's moving. Every time Welch gets the puck, he's going to him, which is a good play. That time, however, he looked at the puck. Welch slipped it through his legs, fortunately, an offside for Elk River. But whenever you're a shadow like that, and all of a sudden you're killing a penalty, you, you got two things pulling at you. There's my man. I'm so conditioned to watching him. But at the same time, I can't focus man on man because I'm a man short. John Brummer, grade 11. Sarsland coaching very smartly right now, changing the guys real slowly, giving Paul Martin a lot of time to get a rest. He hasn't left the ice for a long time again. He's the only guy who's been on the whole penalty kill here as well. So you don't want your guys to get out there too quick. Ben Thott has a high riser, gloved by Mitch Glines. You can see Martin back there checking the clock, seeing how much time set, 20 seconds to go in the penalty. Too many men on the ice. 23 three seconds to go in the period. This is a big 20 seconds for Elk River. They do not want to give up a goal late in the game, late in the second period, and obviously Hastings would like nothing more than to have this kind of momentum going into the locker room. Here's Welch with a shot that's blocked. Puck is still loose. Garcia getting a control on it. And finally swept out to neutral. Tharp backhands it off the wall for Tate. He'll have to hurry. Seven seconds left. He does hurry. Entering the zone. Tate drops it back for okay, Garcia. He'll try to roll it down, but uh, it just stays in the corner. And that will effectively kill off the remaining few seconds of this period. And the Elk River power uh, penalty has expired at the same time. Well, Wally, I'm really enjoying this hockey game. This uh, is a yes. classic hockey game. This game could be the final game that's been so well played by both teams. It's really fun to watch two teams work as hard as they're working, but checking as smartly as they're checking and playing the game the way it is. When you've got a body check, you have the opportunity, you take it. When you've got a shot, you take it. You give yourself up for the play, to make a play. They're doing all the fundamental things right. It's wonderful to watch two high school teams playing like this and to watch a guy like Paul Martin I haven't seen a lot of kids anymore uh, that are going to be drafted next year, but that Paul Martin's going to be a first-round draft pick. First round, you're first picking, round. Eh? He'll be in the first round. Okay. Well, yeah, we just can't get any shots on that. We only got six shots, four in the first. Two that period, we've had a couple period or a couple power plays. They're just very tough to get past. Tell me what you tell your kids in the locker room. This could be the final period of the season. Well, we got to get the puck in deep, let our forecheck go to work, and maybe get some. Chances on net. We're having trouble getting it to the net. We got to start throwing it to the net and crashing the net. Coach, good luck. Hey, thanks. All right, Jeff Grayson, he has the other side of the story. Jeff. Thanks, Ann Amon with Elk Rivers, Tony Sarsland. Coach, so far through two periods, you've shut down a very explosive team. Well, uh, we did a halfway decent job of coaching on our bench. We wouldn't have had a man short on it, too many men on the ice. Uh, I'll take the blame for that. Overall, other other than that, than that mistake, are, are you you got to be pleased, or what are your thoughts so far after 30 minutes? Sure. You know, I, I you know, we played against a lot of an awfully lot of good lines this year. Okay, take a look at the difference in terms of the schedule that we played, as opposed to Hastings, as opposed to Elk River. They have an outstanding line. The line's terrific. Welsh is terrific. Taff is terrific. They got some great players, but we also have a pretty decent line in that second line that shut down the Hill Murray line. It has more goals than that line has. So realistically, I thought we'd shut the line down. I don't know if we can keep them off the board all night. They're that good. But so far, we're doing well. Now, if we don't screw it up too bad coaching-wise, we'll be all right. What do you tell them here? Let, you go in here at the second. We're going to lay our hearts in the line, our guts in the line here for one period, OK? And we've got about four minutes of shifts for each player. And if they can't do that, then they don't deserve it. And I know they have because they've done it all year long. Coach, good luck in the third. Yeah, thanks. That is Tony Sarsland of Elk River. Hard on his team, hard on himself. Uh, taking some blame for a, a shift change in the second period, but his team leading one nothing after two periods. We're back with the Northland Ford Intermission Report of the state high school hockey program. He also did the one for the girls tournament. Here's Andy Scoogwood now with a look at artist Terrence Fogarty. 
Yeah. Jeff, you not only can see great hockey down here at Target Center, you can also see some excellent artwork as well. St. Paul artist Terrence Fogarty responsible for all of it. And that you became a hockey fan if you went to Johnson and on the east side in general. You're responsible for the program you were last year as well. Tell us a little bit about what's on the program this year. Well, this is a celebration of high school hockey in Minnesota. Uh, the Civic Center in St. Paul, its demise. Uh, I wanted to record the Civic Center for posterity for the rest of the years here so people knew what it was like there with the clear boards. And, and there's about 25 to 30 teams uh, represented who had uh, tremendous tournament appearances over the years. And uh, that's basically the genesis for it. Well, I think when people come up and look at your artwork, they, they say, is that a photo or is that uh, painted? Uh, right. This is amazing stuff. Yeah, the, the terminology is called photorealism, and uh, I work from photographs. I'll go to an event, shoot a few rolls of film, come back to the studio, and then work from those photographs. And it's actually a compliment to tell me it looks like a photograph. So, and where where you, you can people can come up and they can buy this stuff as well too. Right, right. Uh, we have a booth here at the state tournament, and uh, people are coming up and buying the limited edition print uh, of the uh, painting that I've done, which is also on the tournament cover this year. Terrence, thanks for talking to us. Your work is amazing. Thank you. All right, Jeff. You can come down to the lower concourse here at Target Center. You can purchase some of this stuff. The work is amazing. Let's go back to you. At the moment, Elk River leading Hastings one to nothing. Minutes of our second Class AA semifinal here on Semifinal Friday at the Target Center. Jeff Grayson back here in downtown Minneapolis as we wrap up the Northland Ford Intermission Report. The state tournament have had this year. This may be the best game of the state tournament to this point. Only one goal that came midway through the first period off the stick of Carson Izadi for Elk River. But what a chess match we're seeing being played defensively by both of these teams. It's a really a well-played game, Wally, and we certainly are watching a chess match. And Sarsland wants to keep Brummer on Welch. And that's what we're going to see, I think, for the rest of the game. Because right now, Welch has decided to let it play, and we'll see if we can score that way. And I got to tell you, Elk River has played tremendous. They've only given up two shots in that second period, and they had two power play opportunities against them. So you could tell what kind of checking job they've done just by those stats. And they're trying to break Dan Welch loose. Here he is, number 23 for Hastings, but all contained by guess who? Number nine, Brummer. John Brummer's had a superlative game as a junior shadow here watching Dan Welch. Back behind his goal, number three for Elk River, Brian Nathy slides it up the boards. He comes back in the point. Here's Majeski, a wrist shot. That goes wide. Paul Martin back there after it. Uses his body to ward off Tafe. Gets the puck and headmans it up the side wall. Reaching the center ice is Brummer, but it's Welch this time, stealing it from him. Houston takes Welch's pass. Trying to split the D. Finds Tafe on the far side, but he's ridden out of the play and slammed into the boards by Paul Martin. What a game Paul Martin has had. He's played a classic. He's done everything well. Joel Hansen drops it back. Nobody home. Here's Houston with some open ice. Can't feed it through. Carrying on, however, Vogel Gassang with a shot that goes off the leg of Nick Drugsma. And that'll bounce all the way back on goal where Matt Klein will have to make a play on it. Klein, 13 and 2 on the year. 14 and 2 with the win yesterday. 1.5 goals against average. Ninth best in the state. Raiders give it away. Trying to cut into Jed Leonard. He's all tied up by Bobby Miller. And Bobby Miller certainly used his body well tonight. Oh, almost a bad steal there, but it hopped over the stick of Drugsma. Big hit as Vanderbosch is locked down. Two on one. There's a shot to score! Well, the line that played so well last night comes through tonight. Gerlach got an outstanding shot away over his check. It was definitely screened. Lines could not see that puck. There's no doubt about it. As Crook was trying to block it, the shot went over his shoulder. You're wearing a black uniform on top of that. That's a difficult shot to pick up. And boy, did it, that go right under the crossbar. Outstanding play by Gerlach. This line has done so much last night and tonight a great hit but Vanderbosch took the hit to make the play that's the creed of the game and look at that shot the goaltender had no idea where it was and that went up and over and in the net after a fine setup by that man that got rattled Vanderbosch 
It's a mouthful on the assist, but the first one going to Matt Vanderbosch, the second one to number 11, Dustin Vogelgesang. Gerlach's goal makes it a one-all hockey game. That's his ninth tally of the year. And what a break. And it all initiated when uh, Drewsman just missed yep. that pass back in the zone and left the defense with only one man back. Now Nathy will feed it around a little bit too far for Paul Barton. The puck will carry to center. It's lofted by Hastings, but up and out of play. We're tied at one now. It's a barn burner down to the wire. And what a classic this one has been and will be to the finish. We'll be back to target center for more. Lou Nanny back with here at Target Center as we join play in progress. There's a long shot from the point. That just misses coming off the stick of number three, Brian Nathy. In behind the goal, puck is pried loose by Nyko getting it to the point. Nathy, another try, is deflected wide. 17 is Nyko. Trying to roll it down in the corner for Stewart. The other Stewart for Hastings gets the puck, slides it around, but not out. Stewart back to the point. Paul Martin with a shot. It rises off a deflection and out of play. Well, we got 12 minutes almost left in this hockey game, but I don't think that's all that's going to be left. This has really got the makings of an overtime game, Wally. Both of these clubs playing hard, not giving up much. When you look at the type of goals that got scored, I, really, they're not the classic type of goals. You're not going to see good passing, wide open men. These fellas are checking. They're staying with their men. They're paying the price when they have to make a play. They are working as hard as you can work and, and chosen a scoreboard because you're not getting a lot of goals. You're not getting a lot of chances. Dan Wells trying to feed it off the boards. Lost it. Gets it back again. Three on two. Hastings. Wells starts up the trip. Uh, check, rather. But Paul Martin broke up the play. Back the other way. Comes... Uh, Joel Hansen putting it out in front. There's a bouncing puck. It goes off into the wall. Dan Wells taking the Brummer with him there. Martin from the point fires. That's blocked. Two players down. Here's Drew letting a shot go. He gets the puck once more, but then is checked by Tate. Hansen into the wall. Bumped by Bobby Miller. Jed Leonard now gets it. Looking for Martin. Feeds him. The wrist shot is kicked wide by Klein. Martin steals it off the stick of Welch. Tate, however, will get it. This time, he cuts to the middle. It works. Too far on the pass to Houston. It won't be icing. Houston racing Martin for it. Martin wisely rides him off the play, and Joe Bailey is there. Finds a man at center ice. Coming back is Carson Izzotti. He has a lone Elk River goal. Relays it behind the goal for Plutie. Here's Kelly Plutie. He was in three state tournaments as a youth hockey player. Now it's dug out of the corner boards there by Chris Navy getting it out in front. Here's Navy shot. Ooh, and that was close. Fine, just getting a glove on it. Back at the point. Nick Drutzma shot. Knocked down in front. Vogelgesang trying to get to it, but it's chopped back down low again by Crook. Finally, Hastings Raiders come out of their own zone. Blowing through the middle now is number 16, Gerlach. He got the lone Hastings goal in this game. I'm not going to call that. No. <laughs> not in this game. Under 10 minutes to go. We're tied at one. This has been a classic game. Two hard skating, hard checking teams playing a superb defensive effort. Joe Bailey. No problem, says Klein. And we'll have a stoppage of play in a timeout on the ice. We'll be back here on KMSP for more of the semifinal tilt. But I'll tell you, they've both got to be extremely proud of the way their teams are playing here tonight. This is a tremendous hockey game. I hope tomorrow night's game, who's ever playing in the finals, is as well played as this. this last night we saw an exciting hockey game because it was so wide open. This yep. is completely different. But as far as being well played, this is the best played game in this tournament that I've seen. Elk River trying to control the play as they change their lines on the fly here again, going for that matchup. Tate can't get it at center ice. Elk River back in the attack. Here's Brummer with a shot. Kicked out by Klein. Behind the goal, Majeski getting it. Now Nyko, number 17 for Elk Rivers. Takes a sharp angle shot. Block Brummer, the rebound. Rises wide. 
Here's Stewart going after it now. Beating the point. Brian Athey fakes the shot. Gets over to Martin. His blast is blocked by Houston, but he can't clear it in a second try does. Elk River is using the points extremely well. The only problem with the points, they're firing into four checkers coming to block shots. I don't know how long it's going to take before they try and fake a shot and get the puck on the net. That's offside as Houston stepped in just a tad prematurely. Martin has done so many things well tonight. He has been the best player in the ice, as we said. But the one thing that he hasn't done well, he's fired into opposing shin pads now three times. One time he finally just took a wrist shot and got it on the net. But when he sees people coming to block the shots all the time, he's going to have to learn to fake a shot sometime and, and make a play. You can see Hastings has gained ground in the shots on goal department. That's led to their goal. Tied at one. Izzotti scored in the first for Elk River. Gerlach here in the third for Hastings. Now Nick Drugsma has pulled over. Vogelgesang squashed up along the wall by Moose Hansen. Goes on to the other door. Izzotti. Leads it for Plutti. Finds Drugsma streaking up the left. Drugs, wrist shot. Klein looks pretty confident. Yes, he does. He's standing right there and taking those shots and gloving them very wisely because he had two wingers, Plutti on one side and Hanson on the other coming to the net. Drugsma made the right play. He's a defenseman. You don't want to go deep, but he should stop here and get a low shot. He got that puck way too high. You got people driving to the net like Hanson in front. On your right and Plutti on the left, you got to get the shot down low so the goalie can't grab it. But the defenseman, Drugsma, made the smart play. When you're going up ice and you got a tie game, you don't want to be leading the rush when you're tied because if you turn that puck over, you're leaving yourself vulnerable back on the point. Well, and that happened earlier when uh, Drugsma pinched in and then yep. uh, Hastings broke out and scored. That's right, and you don't forget those. To say, I'm not going to I'm let sure that Tony Sars was reminding him not yeah. to forget it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's an intense coach. He really is. But he's done an excellent job with this hockey team. And there is Tony Sarslin in his 14th year at Elk River. 29 years he's been coaching. Spent two years up at Halleck, six years with Columbia Heights, and seven years in Beloit, Wisconsin. I think he's going to take a few Anison after this game. <laughs> looking at it. <laughs> he's really working that gum. Yeah. Paul Martin. Squeeze out of the play. Dan Wells throws it up ice now for Tate down the left. Into the zone. Sidesteps a check, but he's upended by Brian Neathy. There'll be no call here. Dan Wells trying to roll it to the point. Does. Garcia will just bang it back down low, but it's intercepted, and back comes Gordy Swanson. A headman pass is blocked. Brummer will circle back to neutral. Hastings trying to come up. Martin foils up. Welch is finally coming out of the zone. He's been going too deep. He's going too deep right now. When you have a shadow on you, you might as well pull him out of the zone so your defense and forwards have less of a uh, forecheck to contend with coming out of the zone. There's less bodies in there. Somebody's going to watch me bring him all the way out, pulling him the way out. Paul Martin skates in and shoots. It's blocked by the defense. A rebound is fired high and wide by number 18, Stewart. The other Stewart, Joe Stewart, number 27 for uh, Hastings is down there working in the corner. Digging it loose now, Joel Hansen, 29. Getting it back over to number 21, Jed Leonard. Hansen throws a check, knocking Garcia down. Martin holds a line for Elk River. Gerlach trying to bring it loose, does. Oh. Gerlach is grabbed. Leonard escapes. <laughs> That one. You don't want to be getting that suit penalties here. 6-12. Uh -uh. You got to watch. Take the man, but take him legitimately. Big Jed leading it there. Now Garcia, nice play off the boards to himself. But then he just throws it away. It'll be icing, and that'll bring a face off all the way back in the Hastings zone. One, one in a classic matchup between two of the top teams in the state. We've got more coming. The Hastings bench right now. They're all standing up. They're really, really excited about this hockey game. Quite a contrast because they're all sitting on the Elk River bench. You can see them right there in the yep. top of your screen. 
winding and firing heads up folks that one's got uh, stitches written all over it, but Bangley hits the glass and slows down going out of the play daddy got a lot of wood on that he actually <laughs> followed through a little too high that caught the top of the glass going out of the building but Sarsland not taking too long to change his lines one thing that you have to be cognizant of when you get to 546 like we are this late in the game you've already played a game the night before and you're playing physical games like Elk River has your guys are going to get tired a little quicker you have to change them fast change them often but make smart changes bad changes kill you and lose hockey games well it looks like Hastings is pretty much using two lines I see the third line is out there right now Rosal's got to be liking this, seeing these two teams beat up each other and going with, uh, for the most part, two lines, sometimes a third line, where they had the option to go with four lines in that earlier game tonight. Rosal's already in the state championship game. They won 6-2 over Holy Angels. Here's Gordy Swanson with a shot wide for Hastings. He's number 17, trying to roll it in front, but Paul Martin, a nice little tip pass ahead, and coming back is Jed Stewart. Stewart getting it across the line. Brummer is knocked down. Bobby Miller's check. Some big crunching going on. Brummer slaps the stick away from Nick Houston. Buck comes back into the Hastings end. Without a stick, it's kicked by Bobby Miller over to Houston. Jeff Tay circles back. It's fed to the point by Hastings. Now Welt, he's got a breakaway. Oh, he hit the side of the goal. He went low where last night he went high to win the game. Welch gets it again, but his pass is right on the Paul Martin stick. What explosive speed he's got. On the point, Tharp fakes the shot, then lets it go. Block gets it in now to Houston. And finally it's stolen, and here's Leonard trugging up the middle. Leonard passing it off. He saw it, he lost it. Now it's back into the slot for big Moose Hansen just wide. Izzotti, number 19, pinned up along the boards. Tharp will backhand it ahead. And here come the Raiders. Houston's pass into a skate as his line mates are changing. Elk River right back with Moose. Hansen kicks at it, and it comes back out to neutral. Izzotti turning the whack at it. But Gerlach breaks loose. Finds a speedy Vanderbosch right in. He shoots. Block and bouncing and goes wide of the Elk River goal. What a save by Glines. He's been tested twice in all alone. Two men on him, and he never gave up a goal. Drugs my right back, and we've got racehorse hockey all of a sudden opening up here tonight. Nick Drugs must check and dump to the ice. No penalty there. Plody going into the board, just hammered by Majeski. Puck into the goal crease. Stepping out. Oh, another big hit on Majeski. What a third period this one is. It's all out now, folks. Just three minutes to go on a tie game. Joel Hansen comes back, looking for Bailey. Fires it across. Oh, and just off of his stick of Paul Martin, who broke in. There's another blast, and that one's wide. Here's Navy at the point, getting it down low for, or attempting to at least, for Joel Bailey, but it's blocked. And Hastings will take off the tension and ice the puck. Standing ovation by the sellout crowd at the Target Center. Grab a cold one. It ain't over. We'll be back to see who goes to the final. UPN. That's what happens here. You never want to stay even. He just outskates everybody. Made a good move, but the goalie beat him on that one. Yep. Lines is just tested twice. Here comes Vanderbosch on another one, and he made a great move, but Lines came up big again. Then right down the other end, we had Elk, Mur Elk River going down, and they got a great opportunity. Paul Martin thought he had one. Watch his great pass coming across. Martin with the shot, oh. and the, whoa, what a save that was. <laughs> I'll tell you. Boy, the goalies have risen to the occasion they, to join the rest of the guys on the ice. They had, you know, time to rest during this game because they weren't getting any quality shots against them because of the real good job done by their defensemen and forwards checking-wise, but they had to have some big saves right now in the closing minutes. Here's Dan Wells breaking in. And he hit the post. Broke through and hit the pipe. No icing here as Klein stops it for Bobby Miller. Wow, what a finish to this one. 
Paul Martin will drive it in from center, but his teammate was still trapped in there, and that's why we have a whistle. And Martin wanted to get a little bit of rest. He didn't worry about that. On that opportunity for Welch, the puck was thrown high, and they lost sight of it. Everybody lost sight, and Welch just keeps coming from the side. He saw it from the right, kicked it ahead, and he had that speed. He went to the side. He beat the goaltender on the far side, but there wasn't enough room where he beat him. Glines played him well, and all he had left was that pipe area, and that's Whoa. what he hit. And I tell you, as we're showing the replays, they've got him on the uh, scoreboard clock here at the target center, and you can just hear everybody in the building going, ooh, boy. And now a change made by Welch. He's <laughs> trying to get uh, Daff's line off there, and get stuck with Dr uh, Brummer out there. Brummer should have gone right to the boards, and when the puck was dropped, come right off and be staying with his man. But since he didn't have a lot last change, he stayed on the ice, and that's going to free Welch up on the next shift. Here's Trevor Stewart with a long shot that Klein gloves going to his knees. We've got one more break to get out of the way. We'll do that right now and be back for the final one minute and 50 seconds of this third period. Forward line because they didn't want to stay on the ice, but they had to. Welch has got the last change for Hastings, so they get to rest an extra 20, 30 seconds here, and they really needed that because they were on for Welch's line and this next line. Stewart pulls it back. Martin shoots. Stewart and Gerlach will face off once again. Every one of these that happened, you're going to see a, a whistle taken and the forward's really happy about it. There's a shot by Martin. He misses the check coming out. Gets it on the net. Good save by Glein. This time, Hastings controls in the face off. Joe Stewart. Watched by Brummer and check. Stewart centers for her. Oh, Brummer, and that quick release is just wide by Nichol. Stewart for Hastings sends it ahead. Gets a redrop pass. They work the other side, and Garcia moves it out to center. Gerlach across the line. Vogel Gassan goes for it. He's checked into the wall by Nathy, and Paul Martin will pick up the loose puck for Elk River. Through the middle comes Brummer. He has Stewart with him. Brummer, the wrist shot. Klein gloves it. 106 to go in the third. And I, I'm, I'm surprised if Sarzo doesn't call a timeout here only because he could rest Brummer if he wants him on at this time. That's the uh, 106 to go. You're not going to need your timeout if you keep him tied or at least go ahead. So if you want to rest him, now's the time to get that line back out there. Otherwise, this will be the first time. And obviously, like he said at the outset, all his lines check well, so he's not concerned about it. But this is uh, one of the few times that Leonard's lines out against Tassler. Number three, Elk River versus number two, Hastings. Waiting to see who will meet number one, Rozo, for tomorrow's double-A championship. We'll have that for you at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Right here on UPN 9, Joe Bailey. And Klein is seeing a lot of long bombs here in the waning stages of this game. Well, whenever you're in a tie game and you're getting close to the end of the game, every opportunity you get to shoot the puck in the net, you got to take it. Here's a shot from way out there from Leonard. But when you're coming with speed, you never know what's going to happen. You put the shot in the net, something could go in. 51 seconds to go on the third. Tate ties up his man, Stewart, in the faceoff. Make that Leonard in the faceoff slot. And Keeper tries to come out of the zone. Majeski will have to go back after it for Hastings. Very quick feet, good, strong, physical player. He just locks it all the way down. It will have enough to be icing against the Raiders. And you've got Kiefer moved up on the uh, line with Tafe and Welch now. Hastings isn't out there, and I don't know if he's hurt or they just made a line change, but this is a, a different look for Hastings' top line. Now we got a switch and uh, Kiefer's coming off and it looks like it might be Houston's coming on. Yes, it is. Yep. Could have been something wrong with his equipment or another reason. But uh, at the same time, this gives Sarzen the opportunity to get Brummer back out there against Welch. There's a 1980 grad of Michigan State. He spent six years at South St. Paul and now five years here at Hastings High School. There's a long flip pass. Martin nicely goes down to block that effort. Tate to Welch. They'll have to circle back for it. 
Then gets it away. You don't see him do that much. Trevor Stewart going after it. A couple of players move over to tie it up along the wall. And as they do, that'll spot another face off with only seven seconds to go deep in the Hastings zone. And Lou, we've had a lot of face offs back at this end of the rink. Yes, we have. And uh, again, you're tempting fate when you do that. One of the things you might watch Hastings do, if we, if we get into overtime, we still have six seconds to go, but you might see them try some long flip passes, passes where Welch can skate into him so that he can try and outskate his checker. That's one way to get him free. You try and get him to go with full speed, throw it so far that he's the only guy to get to it because he's the quickest. Stewart versus Tate. Stewart wins it, but Martin had moved towards the middle, have to regroup in neutral. He's just going to rag it off. And we're going to go to overtime, folks. Well, I felt that it's coming. Friday night. Why not, eh? Well, like I said at the beginning, early in the third, this felt like an overtime game. I just, just one of those games when you have teams playing as close to the vest as they've been playing, and we did have about 30 seconds where it opened up, and we had three outstanding chances. But other than that, you never saw quality chances. These clubs are really concerned about the defense first. And that's why you get 1-1 one, one games and tight, tight uh, checking games. They've done an excellent job here. Only one goal in the third period. That came by Gerlach of Hastings, and that puts us into this 1-1 one, one situation. A short break here, and we've got an eight-minute overtime coming up in two and a half minutes. I mean, deservedly so. You look at the scoreboard, it's 1-1. One, one. You look at the shots on goal, Elk River 27, Hastings 10. The scoreboard 1-1 is much more indicative of the play we've had than the shots on goal. This has been very, very close for both sides. You're going to see a chance here by Welch of Elk River, I remember Hastings, when he hits the far pipe. And he had an earlier chance that Lyons made an outstanding save on. Then another shot here from Paul Martin. We've had great play by both of these clubs. This, as we said earlier, has been the best game of the tournament. It's certainly an enjoyable one for the fans. And each of these clubs has laid their heart on the line thus far. Sarsland said his team would lay their hearts on the line in the third. Well, now they're going to have yep. to do it in the overtime as well because they're playing a very tough Hastings team. And you look at Russ Welch, and he's got to be really excited about the way his club has come back in that third period. The Sarsland's Elks have really shut down Hastings. Hastings, through three periods, Lou, has only 10 shots on goal. They got four in the third, scoring on one of those. Elk River counted with 13. They have a game total right now of 27 to 10 advantage in shots. The only difference in the third, though, Elk River was shooting the puck from the blue line from far out, and they did have a lot of shots on goal that were easy to control. The quality chances there, uh, Elk River had maybe one or two in the period, and I'd say Hastings had three, and that's why we got a 1-1 tie here. Overall, each of these clubs has really been able to limit the quality chances because of their good checking. It's like the last few minutes of pond hockey. Next goal wins. We're in an eight-minute overtime. Hopefully only eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Big check in the corner. Welch throwing it on Martin. Puck is cleared by Stewart, but not out. Martin will have another try. Rings it around to the weak side, but it's held in there by Ben Tharp. Now, Plutey. On the ice, trying to get it to Nyko, but from the blue line, his slarp shots block. Paul Martin dances out of traffic and leads the Elks up the middle. Cutting right, back to the middle. Shooting, block, a rebound. Oh, Klein stopping it there. Plutey almost ended the game. Martin still in deep, tries a shot. It's blocked, and Tharp tries to clear, but not out. Plutey looking for it, but it's chucked out and high and into center ice. Oh. Whoa, Plutie's going to be dreaming about that one like oh. Welch is dreaming about the one he had earlier. Elk River changing on the go. Ben Tharp bringing it to center ice and sliding along the wheel back in behind the goal. Paul Martin over to Joe Bailey. Bailey's long cross ice pass to Joel Hansen one on one. Stewart riding him out of the play. Nice job by Joe Stewart of Hastings. Leonard trying to pry it out of there, but he's uh, beaten to the puck by Hastings. Here they come. Vanderbosch to center, had it knocked off of his stick. Right back is Bailey, but he's ridden out of play. Derek Garcia now. Up for Vanderbosch. The little spark plug. Shoots it in. Plummer is there. And number nine for Elk River lifts it out to center ice. 
Hastings defense has played about 10 times better tonight than they did last night. They have really been solid back there. Used their body, played the way they're supposed to, taking the man properly, moving the puck out. They've had a real good game here tonight. Moose Hansen ices it. Faceoff will come in the Elk River zone, the first one we've had back there in quite a long time. You said earlier, Stewart played the man perfectly, and that's what he did. When you have a guy coming one-on-one, -on -one, you don't take the puck, you take the man. Stewart forced him wide, then rubbed him out with a chuck. That's what you want to do. You've got to make certain you take the man and eliminate him. Here's a play by Paul Martin coming up the ice. He sees the ice so well, goes to his forehand where he's going to get a shot on net. The rebound's coming to Plutie, and he just overskated it. Huh. He tried to force it underneath rather than pulling it. If he'd have pulled it with him going across, the goaltender's already lying prone. He would have had an open net. Tate back to Welch. Wow. Majeski was going to step up, but thought better of it, and Nyko will send it all the way down. Dan Welch rounds his goal. Brummer is not on the ice. Welch is checked, however. And here's Brian Neathy shifting right. And they take the long bomb shots. I still think that's great strategy. Put it on that's target. Right. That's for sure. The one thing you don't want to do, though, when you're a defenseman, Navy came over, made the play, took the shot. But you see where he carried the puck from the left point all the way over to the right. There's nobody in the far side. You've got Welch on the ice who's a right wing. You don't leave your position. You move it across or throw it in. You can't, as a defenseman, take the chance to go and carry from the red line on when you've got everybody in front of you. You've got to move the puck because the big worst thing that could happen is a turnover and a race for a loose puck, and you've got Welch on the ice. Paul Martin sidesteps a check, moving close, and fires just wide. Bailey behind the net, trying to get it. Well, Martin did it finally. He faked the shot and stepped around the check and got himself a good chance. Fed down low by Plutie. He centers it. Picked off by the second line of Hastings. Can't clear it. Plutie now trying to get it over to Stewart. There's a shot that goes off a leg in front wide. Now it's just lifted by Ben Tharp to center ice. And slow down in his tracks is Vogelgesang. Martin takes a pass. Look at Incrum into the zone. Goes wide to the right. Backhander just misses on the far door. Raiders still having trouble getting out. Good, tenacious forechecking going on by Elk River. Drugsma sends it over to the other side. Players fall. Big check there. Vanderbosch is stopped in his tracks. He'll immediately head off the ice. Back comes Joe Bailey for Elk River, and that shot is sticked wide by Klein. Pounded out to center. Brummer will shoot it back in. Everybody tags up, so play will continue. When we say tags up, that means they leave the zone, so it keeps the play onside. Here's a steal right at the blue line by number 16, Plutey. He has a great overtime going for him. Plutey getting it again off of his Adi stick. Plutey the long shot, stopped by the defense of Stewart. Now here's a drive right on goal by Stewart for Elk River. And boy, oh boy, did Klein have to hold on to that because Izzotti was all alone right in front of him. Klein getting a lot of shots now, and they're starting to get closer with the shots. They're not from as far out. And that time, he made a real wise move, grabbed that and held on to it because Elk River in the last minute has put on a lot of pressure. Here's an opportunity earlier to just miss the net. But Elk River is getting shots from 35 and 40 feet now, and that's getting a little too close. Here's the last shot from a little farther out than that. But goaltender wisely held on to it. Elk River's taking control of this game. The only thing they're unable to do is to finish it. Hastings looking a little bit tired right now, I think, too, though. That they are, but, uh, you know, whenever you're in an overtime like this, what happens when you're in your own zone for a little while, you, you start, the adrenaline's going so much, you get tired quicker. You, you, you feel a lot fresher when the puck's in the neutral zone than the other zone. You get more tired when you're under pressure all the time. And Elk River has been able to just dump the puck in and keep it in. They're not allowing them to skate out as well as they did before. Strong forecheck by Elk River all this overtime. They've played very well in the overtime this far. Elk River has three times as many shots, and there's the 31st save for Matt Klein. And how about the draws? They won that one again. They're winning a lot of those draws. Elk River trying to come back across the line. Dan Wells broke it up momentarily. Goes in the corner where Stewart is there. Stewart getting the return pass. Here's Trevor Stewart with a shot. 
And now, finally, Hastings coming up. Ben, or, uh, Majeski had it momentarily. And this is uh, the, the only time that Martin hasn't been out on the ice with Welch's line. The last time it happened, Welch scored a goal because Martin was on the bench. That's right. Or uh, Hastings scored a goal, I should say. Here's Drugsma going in deep. That's Nate Drugsma. He hasn't seen a shift for a long time. Number seven for Elk River. Bobby Miller tying up his man in the corner. A good wrestling match going on there. And the Raiders again looking tired. And look who is back on the point covering up Brummer. Brummer has been outstanding here tonight. That was a real wise move. His defenseman went up deep and got caught in the corner, which is a no-no at this stage of the game. And with Welch on the ice, Brummer was intelligent enough to go back and stand on the blue line. Real good play. Doesn't matter if Welch or anybody's on the ice. You don't want to leave one defenseman back there. A forward yeah. should pick up that point. These kids are well-schooled here. They're playing a real intelligent hockey game. Somebody moved early on the faceoff, and, and Elk River would have won that one, too. Hastings has got to stop that. They're giving up too many draws. They're losing far too many. Bailey, Leonard, and Hansen up front for Elk River. It's Bailey. Back to the point for Martin. To Leonard. Stolen by Gerlach. Trying to feed to Vanderbosch, but it's held in by Martin. Back in the corner to the left of the Hastings goal. The Raiders finally grab it off. Vanderboss can't get it by Paul Martin. Martin kicking it in, and finally it's lugged out by Ben Tharp. They're coming three abreast. Vanderboss across the line, looking in the middle for Gerlach. Pass too far. Fired right back in. Everybody tags up. It's onside. Hastings changing on the go. Elk Rivers Martin coming down the right wing boards. Puts on a burst of speed, but can't get by the last guy. Now here's a chance trying to come out the center race with Pete Swanson, but he's checked. Nick Drutzma just firing it in. And here comes Keeper back for Hastings. As he's checked, he relays it in deep. Getting back is Michael. Number 17 for Elk River. Out to the middle. Cutting left. Now trying to angle back right, but Majeski forces him wide. Behind the goal is Kelly Plutey, number 16 for Elk River. Handing it off now to Stewart. Looking towards the point. Brummer on the point. Takes a shot. Look out. It hits the skate. The rebound. Oh, what a hit skate. Oh, the skate as he's down on the ice. Matt Klein came up with a huge save. That was his save of the night. Wow. What a save. What a save that was. Just terrific. Hastings looking like a boxer back on the ropes. Matt Klein came up huge. Boy, there was a lot of pressure going on, but the final shot from the side, he got that with the inside of his skate, and look at this shot from the far side that he's down on his back, and he lifts his leg up, and he knocks it down. That shot by Plutey was ticketed all the way. Wow, is this a finish or what? 1.23 to go in overtime, number one. And if we got a switch here or what, Bremer is now playing defense with Mark. He's done that for the last yep. few shifts. Yep. Now Elk River taking a shot, and it rises off of the leg just wide. Leonard getting it. Back to the point for Bremer. He lets it go. Blocked by Welch. Welch trying to sidestep Bremer, but unsuccessful in doing so. Final minute of the first overtime. Tied at one. Ben Tharp on goal. Brummer turns, clears. Hits the leg, but stays over to Paul Martin. He's checked. Brummer there to help out. Nichol to Stewart to Nichol. Gets around Garcia, but then was written off the play. And Hastings the defense again, forcing those puck areas wide. They've really done a good job. Stewart and Majeski, each of them, the last two shifts that Elk River came down with the puck. They forced him right to the wall. Vanderbosch has speed. And his shot is handled easily by Mitch Glines. Paul Martin, nice little move up to Stewart. Here they come, three on two. Stewart, Glines, fires, blocked by Joe Stewart of Hastings. Offside on the left wing. A little too anxious. Plutie coming down the far side that time. Got somewhat ahead of the play and just beat him over by a step. Ten seconds to go. 
and another dramatic game involving the Hastings Raiders. Boy, oh boy. Well, <clears throat> I guess you could expect a tie game when you have the kind of effort and checking ability that these two clubs have exhibited here tonight. They continue to do an outstanding job on containing their checks. Jed Leonard won the faceoff. Joe Bailey's backhander blocked. Clock is slowly ticking down. Martin will let one more shot go. And that's it for the first overtime. There will be a full-blown intermission here. I think it's an intermission that Hastings can really use, Lou, because there's no question that Elk River is carrying the mow in this one. Yeah, there is no doubt about that. I, I guess you'd have to say that uh, from the outset, Hastings really wasn't a threat in that overtime. That eight minutes completely dominated by Elk River. They had a lot of shots, a lot of opportunities uh, from far out, and then they had two or three from close in. Klein made his save of the game on one of the shots from Plutie. And overall, when you look at the ice that period, it was <laughs> slanted in the, into Hastings' zone. It just seemed like every time we looked up, we were getting a face-off or some play in Hastings' defensive zone. Great effort by Elk River that period. It was a very solid period by goaltender Klein for Hastings. The scoring is even. The shots are lopsided in favor of Tony Sarsland, who is downstairs now with Jeff Grayson. Thanks, Wally. Well, Coach, uh, I'm not sure what to ask you after a great one like this right now. What are your thoughts so far, what we've seen? Well, you know, <laughs> when it gets like this, we've been here before. And it's, you know, we're, we're playing well. I mean, we're dominating. I mean, look at the shots. But that's the crazy thing about hockey. You know, they can dominate, dominate, come down, take one shot and score. So I just hope we can put a puck in here pretty soon. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a crazy season this way. What can you say right now? What does a coach say to his players right now in a, in a situation like this when both teams are giving their all at this intermission? Uh, we're just still going to go out just like we have in other overtimes we've been and just lay our hearts on our line. And these kids, uh, they don't know what quit's all about. I mean, they're just... They'll do the best they possibly can, and hopefully we can get a puck by this kid. Uh, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, Hastings is going to do the same thing. And so we'll, we'll do the best we can. That's all I can tell you. I mean, our kids have played very well. Look at the shots and look at the dominance and territory, and I, and I, and I think uh, we deserve to win it, but I don't know if we're going to or not. Coach, we'll let you get in and talk to your team. Thanks. Right, thanks. That's Tony Sarzel now over to Andy Scootman. Okay, Jeff, thank you very much. Russ Welch, they dominated you. Oh, oh my gosh, they've been dominating us the whole game. I, I don't know what it was with Hastings. I mean, it was Luthies last year, Blaine last night, Elgriver tonight. It <laughs> just, it's just one right after another, but uh, we're hanging on for dear life right now. They're just taking it to us, like you said. Tell me what you have to do. We have to get a break. I mean, they are a solid team. They are the best team we have faced all year. There's no doubt in my mind we have not faced a team with this smothering of four check and defense all year long and we're just having trouble getting out of it we need to break somehow bounce somewhere maybe somebody fall down i don't know but right now we need the break because they're the better team tonight so far matt klein talk a little bit about him he saved you yeah last night he had a tough night so we decided to come back with him knowing that he probably wouldn't have two bad games in a row and boy he has had a heck of a game tonight for us coach i'll let you get in the locker room good luck thanks Hastings, Elk River, 1-1 after one overtime. Don't go away. We've got a barn burner here at Target Center. We're back with more in a moment. 11, but as you see here, all that counts is just two goals in this game, one by each club, and it has been a sterling performance by Elk River. I think both coaches really summed it up well in the intermission there. It, it's been all Elk River. Hastings doesn't know what to do. Well, like uh, Russ Welch, the coach of Hastings says, they're on a wing and a prayer. They need a break. They need a bounce of a puck. And Elk River just wants to continue to do what they do and hope that they can get something behind Klein. They really dominated the overtime. Before the overtime, the game was closer than that. But from the overtime, the onset, it was like a slant yeah. of ice. It was just complete domination by Elk River. It's amazing they never put one of them in the net. And right now, what happens when you're sitting, you get a little frustrated that you haven't. Here's a great opportunity you'll see right here for Elk River. A real good shot on net. It catches the inside of the goalie's skate. He didn't know where it was. It went to Plutie on the left. He took the shot, and the goaltender Klein kicked his leg up and made the save. That's when you start wondering, what do we have to do to get one in the net? And that's when you also start wondering, are they going to get a fluke in the net? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Well, Dan Welch has been contained. He was a hero in last night's game. 
but all he needs to do is break loose once. We'll be back to see what happens in our second overtime period here at the Target Center. Town Minneapolis, the site of the 1999 State Boys High School Hockey Tournament. It will be here as well next year, and then moving over to the brand new arena in downtown St. Paul. But the story right now has been uh, phenomenal. Uh, uh, come on, folks, the game is not that boring. He's got one eye open. No, he's opening. <laughs> he closed it. Uh, they're awake now. Well, we got caught. Look at the monitor. I'll tell you one thing, Wally. It's a great place. We get to work from here right from the suite area. We're a lot closer to the ice. Actually, all the, all the fans in here have got a great seat. This is really a good viewing uh, uh, place. And the new St. Paul Civic Center is going to be outstanding as well. It, it's really something the new buildings uh, uh, you're not going to get any better like we said in Met Center sight lines in the past but these new buildings have got great sight lines with more seats and that's what you really need there's a story of the game uh, it seems like spurts when uh, their second uh, column there face-offs one has come up but Elk River at times is winning a lot in a row but it's 26 to 25 overall Hastings uh, has is the team with the only power play opportunities in this game and for a team that did 43% over the course of the regular season, they're 0 for the playoffs at the state tournament. And 0 for 3 with only 11 shots on goal, that tells you that they didn't have a very effective power play because that means they had six minutes when they had a man advantage and they only have 11 shots total in the, the game thus far. So good checking job by Elk River. Overtime number two, period number five. Hastings trying to come out of their own zone. They were tired through the third and the first overtime. Let's see if they found some new energy with that rest in the intermission. Brummer make that uh, number three uh, Navy taking a shot, trying to clear it, unable to do so. Here's Tafe along the wall, just rolling it back down low, looking for Houston. He tries to come out of the corner. Uh, well, just popped from behind by Stewart. Stewart dropped, and there's a shot right on, and one of the few tests that Lyons has seen in a long time is blocked. And that was a really uh, surprise to me. They had Flutie's line out there against Tafe's line, and uh, whether you got a lot of confidence in your people or not, the other way that you've been going has done so well with Brummer on them that you hate to flirt with uh, the kind of success you had. Well, Hansen was just popped on a big check there by defenseman Joe Stewart, who stood up on the play for Hastings. Now Garcia playing it. Nathy has it. Then lost the puck. Trying to come away as Garlack, but boy, was he hauled down by a back-checking effort by Nathy. And the coach has made the decision now to go with Brummer on defense all the way. He moved him back there a couple shifts into the overtime, and he's got him back there now, and he's going to go that way. Joe Stewart's long bomb pass is uh, way out of everybody's reach. It'll be an icing call against Hastings. What that tells you, Wally, is either you're, you're concerned that your defensemen are getting tired, you can't play Paul Martin as much as you want, so you want to get Brummer out there. You've got a great deal of respect in his defensive abilities, and you're also taking someone else out of the lineup, but at the same time, you're giving up the great checking job that I think was a key for El Elk River thus far. Trevor Stewart won the draw. There's a shot, a loose puck. Oh, ho, ho. and that's cleared away by Gordy Swanson. Joe Stewart going after. Lost it to Trevor Stewart. Trying to dance back out in front, but he's knocked down to the ice. Hastings trying to clear, but Brummer at the blue line is trying to hold the line. Puck does squirt out. And 16 is Plutey. Brummer made a great play there, and that would have been doing it all. Clean defense and then scoring the winner. Only to have it saved by Klein. <laughs> Chasing it back into his own zone is Nick Drupsma. He's number five for Elk River. Trying to help out down there is 16 Flutie, who's had some chances here in overtime to win the game. And here's Dan Welch back at center ice. Up to Tate. The shot. Klein's a save. It's bouncing in the crease. The rebound. Oh, and it just hops away from Majeski, who had moved in. Majeski's lost his stick. He's a defenseman. Buck is cleared by Elk River, and for the first time, they're sent back reeling in the overtime sessions. We're going to take a short break and be back to Target Center for a turnaround that looks to be evolving here. Takes a shot. <coughs> Lines makes a save, but he can't find a rebound, and Houston's 
breaking in, trying to get that loose puck. As you see an open net, and it just bounces away. And a very close one there for Hastings and also Elk River. You see now, Wally, <clears throat> you've got Tace line staying in the ice. And what happens now when you've taken the checker that's paid so much attention to him away, you've got to make sure whoever comes out and check him does the same job. Because when yeah. Brummer was on Welch, Tate only had Houstons to work with, and he he wasn't carrying the puck through people, and it really eliminated the offense because Welch es essentially was eliminated. Now when you have him out there, if someone's not going to watch him or shadow him as much, it gives the center more options than he had before. And Brummer not on the ice. But you got uh, Paul Martin out there. You're going to make sure Martin or Brummer's always on the ice. At least that's the way it looks to me when he's doing whatever Welch is out there. Welch was knocked down. Both feet were inside the zone, and that means it's offside as his teammates try to come in on the attack. It surprised me that they came right back with uh, Tafe's line so quickly because, you know, Hastings came out, they were fresh, and if you start using your key players too early too much, you could get them tired, and if a goal isn't scored by then, then you're really going to be in uh, sitting back in your heels a little bit. Mark River using more players than Hastings has right now. Joe Stewart stepping up into the play as the Welch, Tape, and Houston line stays on the ice for the Raiders. Here is Houston, but it's a bouncing puck. Paul Martin stepping up, brings the Elks on the attack. Here's Martin at the edge of the circle, but that shot is blocked by Matt Klein. Back again for Martin. Tossed into the slot. Picked up now by Ben Tharp. Finds Welch. Fires! Whoa, and Klein's just got a stick on that one. He can and shoot the whistle. Puck. Went out of play. Welch got a lot of wood on that one. Glines had to make the save. You see, here he comes with speed. And when you're coming with speed, and boy, was that that shot was ticketed for that corner. Yeah, it was going in. Well, that was a good save by Glines. He had some mustard on that one. Solid all year. He was second in the conference with a 1.93 goals against average, Mitch Glines. 1.88 entering the state tournament here. Woo. Gerlach lost the faceoff. Moose Hansen shoots it back down into the Hastings end. This Joe Stewart brings it around. This is a line that could be very dangerous for Hastings right here. They're playing against the third line of uh, Elk River, and this line for Hastings has got speed. Here's Vanderbos, the fast one on the line, passing it up the middle. Here's an opportunity for Gerlach to break away. Oh, and a stop right at the goal line. The puck, however still loose but the net is obviously gone lots of pushing going on Glines not even in there anymore <laughs> yeah. what an opportunity for the speedy Gerlach and that's what that's what uh, I think Welch would like to see when that line was out there against the third line they've got speed on that line and they are dangerous they pass the puck well and Gerlach who's played so well here tonight breaks in here makes a good move but what a great save again by Glines he's had to come up big with a couple of times, and that was terrific. An outstanding play. Vanderbosch made that far pass, and boy, oh boy, did he ever make a good save. Then, if you go for the rebound, here comes Eric Hansen, who's six foot three, and he's going to make you pay. <laughs> and you know, Vanderbosch. Gerlach, a shot right on the puck is still loose. The goalie's in the net. The puck is not. Boy. Right on the right line. Right on at that again. the line. I think that Elk River will change lines here. They better. And uh, it looks, looks like, like a couple yeah, of penalties. Yeah, eh? we're going to have a couple of penalties here going at it. Key draw, and boy, a, a good shot there. That was a good shot on goal. Lines have to make another save. We're going to have coincidental penalties coming at this time. Glines has had more work in the last minute and a half than he had in the previous 10. He had to come up big there again. So offsetting minors, so it'll still be five on five hockey here. It just means Moose Hansen and Vanderbosch are out of the game for a couple of minutes. They'll be available for duty the first whistle after the two minutes have expired. 
Now, stepping up, Majeski, shot hits escape. Going after it into the slot was Houston, but couldn't get there, and here come Elk River back. Paul Martin, another rush off ice, but Brummer was knocked offside by Dan Welch. He gets a little retribution. And now Sarsland has elected to go back to Brummer on Welch. Yeah. And this time, as you said, Welch got <laughs> retribution because he took Brummer down and took him over the line. <laughs> Good play by Welch there, giving Brummer a little bit of his own medicine. Saying, Looks like Tony Sarsland has changed his strategy a little bit here in this overtime, Louie, and I don't understand it. Well, I think he's come back to it now. He, he, yeah. Unless, well, he's just, yeah, he has come back to it. Now he's, he's going back to where he was comfortable before with Brummer on Welch. And uh, you got Martin on the point. Brummer, Stewart, and Nichol up front now. For Elk River. Houston can't find it. Nobody can. Well, we have a whistle. That's why nobody's looking for it. A couple of players were squared off, and it looks like two more penalties. Yeah, two more going in. Dave's going in. It looks like Stewart, probably. All of a sudden, we got penalties. Well, you, you know, when the pressure really mounts and uh, you're getting in tight situations, you get a little more chippy and you expect that the referee's not going to call anything on you, so you each uh, yeah. are willing to give a little more than you receive. High sticking calls. 435. The puck is dropped. Still five on five hockey. We're tied. Big check there thrown by Dan Welch on Joe Bailey. Welch getting the puck, looking across ice, finds a man. Majeski breaking up the middle, it's three on two, the big shot, lines the save. And everybody's driving to the net on the shots now. Everybody's going looking for a rebound. And when the shot goes to the net, the wings and forwards and centers are going to the net. And you're going to see a lot more activity around the net. Watch this for offside. It was a great non-call by the official because the guy released the shot, got it over the blue line before the left winger crossed the blue line completely. Referee and linesman have been extremely sharp here tonight. Referees are Jeff Shy and Jim Van Wald. Jerome Krieger is the linesman. He drops the puck. Hastings has outshot Elk River 6-2 here in the second overtime as the tables in this game have shifted from the previous two periods. Behind his goal is Derek Garcia. Pass out to the middle, just missing Dustin Vogelgesang. Kept in an all-conference quarterback for the Hastings team during football season. Paul Martin going back. Remember, he's a kid that almost decided to play basketball two years ago. He's going to be very happy that he didn't. Yeah, especially when the scouts are taking a look yeah, at him. for sure. Hastings getting it out of the zone. Gerlach poking at it. Back it comes for Garcia, the little guy with a big heart up to Majeski. A nice little pump pass. Just misses a streaking number 18, Travis Kiefer. Kiefer after it behind the goal. Tied up along the wall by Nathy. Moving in to help out is Gordy Swanson. He's just kind of watching like a hawk there for something to happen, and it doesn't. I am really surprised that Paul Martin is not exhausted right now. He has played an unbelievable amount of time here. If you had a clock on him, I'd say he's played 70% 70, 70 of his game easily. And he's finally getting a little break right here. He was bent over in front of the net, and it's a smart move by the coach to give him a little rest because You've got to get your wind, especially when you're in such a tight position like this where one little mistake can mean the game. Mm -hmm. You've got to be fresh. Carson Izadi scored for Elk River in the first period. Adam Gerlach in the third period for Hastings. And you see Danny Welch getting double shifted here. Two different lines. Yep. Hits Welch almost with an opportunity. Going after now Gordy Swanson, 17, as the puck remains behind the Elk River goal. Steal by Swanson. Brummer in there to take control for the Elks. And now they are the team that is back on their heels somewhat and dumping it all the way down for an icing call. We'll be back to the target center for more of this overtime semifinal contest. These two coaches right now, highly excitable and very, very nervous. 
And to me, Wally, I think the ice has been slanted in the other direction this overtime. Yes, it Hastings has. has had it all over Elk River. Here's Paul Martin. And now his partner, Nick Drutzma, sends it to center ice. Bobby Miller getting it. Drutzma across to Joel Hansen. Top of the circle. Whoa! Klein went for it, missed, and it just went wide. Joe Bailey, number 10, is squashed up by Bobby Miller and moving in is Adam Gerlach to help out. The lone goal scorer in this game for Hastings. And Gerlach's had an outstanding game. He played great last night, and he's doing it again here tonight. The smooth skating, Paul Martin. Has a pass broken up. Ben Tharp missed it. Hansen has it stabbed off the stick. Martin will shoot from the blue line. That's on goal. Seven and a half to go here in the second overtime. Open man is sprinting. Vanderbosch trying to get it off Martin, but he's collared and dropped. But did you see how well Martin reacted? I mean, he really is a good skater. To be able to react to position that quickly is fantastic. And he does it again, breaking up a near breakaway for Gordy Swanson. Boy, he's got good feet. Nyko on the boards. Number 17. Who's going to get the puck? Finally, it's picked up along the wall by Garcia, but not cleared. Now Joe Stewart will retreat behind his goal for Hastings. Headman pass goes to Kiefer. Travis Kiefer just lobs it in. Brian Neathy is there for it. Neathy's check. Kiefer coming away with the puck, looking for an open man, shoots! And it deflects off a defenseman stick wide. Stewart stepping up. But it's Nichol coming back and just dumping it in as he crosses center and heads off on an Elk River line change. Garcia has open ice. Finds a man breaking up the left wing boards. Here comes number 25, Houston into the zone. He's taken off of his feet by number 11 defenseman Crook. Up through the middle comes Plutie. He's had some chances in the first overtime. Puck hanging. Who's getting it? Joe Bailey does. Spin the rama, but it goes nowhere. Houston looking across oh. ice, finds an open man. Here's Welch shooting and blocked by Mitch Glines. A bouncer sent down ice. Klein helps it off to the side wall. Open in the middle as well. Tips it over to Houston. Coming in. He shoots. And it's just wide on the far side. Bailey taps it out of the zone. Oh, come on, linesman. You waved it off and you called it. Anyways, it stops the play. I and, guess he wasn't sure. And to end action, and <laughs> as you see, a good move by Welch, and he tries to pull the puck inside. Defensive played him well, but he still got the shot away and got on the net. Then from the far side, Houston takes a shot, just missed wide. What a hockey game. Hope you're enjoying this one, folks, like we are. Five under six minutes now left to go here in the second overtime. Here's Vanderbosch trying to get the puck for Hastings. It's hanging loose there, and this is Travis Stewart stepping up ice for Elk River. Stewart getting around Gerlach across the line. Still with it. Puts it in front. Just out of the reach of Hansen. Back the other way. Raiders shot goes wide. Brian Athey is there. He'll just bank it off the boards. And Majeski will shoot it back in for Hastings. Kiefer going for it. Sends it back to the point. Ben Tharp will toss it back around. Navy will leave it for Paul Martin. Joel Hansen trying to get out of the zone for Elk River. Unable to do so. Martin. Lost it to Tate. He plays it back. A turnaround shot by Swanson's off target. Swanson will go for it again. This is Pete trying to cut out in front. He does. The shot is score! Keeper! Hastings wins in overtime. And a fresh man gets on the ice after some strong forechecking by Hastings. A great shot on the short side, one that the goaltender basically couldn't see. And it just finds itself on the inside of the pipe and Hastings will be moving on to play Rozo. What a heroic effort by these two clubs tonight and a great second overtime by Hastings.
Elk River gave it everything they could throughout the game, especially in that first overtime. They were beaten until we see the, the goal here. It looks like Kiefer, but they were beaten by a team that never quit.